In this video, we're going to show you how to use DICE to do some tracking of objects and images and video files. Um, where we're going to start is with the DICE web page. So if you go to GitHub and then go to the actual DICE code and then go to releases, you can download an installer for your uh, operating system if it's on Mac or Windows. If you're using Linux, you're going to have to build from source. Um, there's also this dice-examples.zip file. You can download that. That has all the files that we're going to use and the images that we're going to use uh, in the 2D tracking example. So assuming you've already got DICE installed on your system and you've downloaded the examples uh, repository, go ahead and launch DICE. And the default mode that DICE opens in is in the subset-based full field mode. Um, we want to actually change that to use the tracking mode. So you go over here to the options section and click tracking and that will change the interface a little bit. You lose some of the options in the view control and it adds a couple in the ROI selection area. Um, just as a basic overview of what you have in the GUI itself, on the left hand side this is where you load your images that you're going to use in the analysis. Below that is where you select um, what you want to do as far as running the DICE executable and on the right hand side you've got options, um, a little bit of reference information and then a breakdown of what's going on in your work working directory. So when you load DICE it automatically creates this DICE working directory if you don't already have one created but you can use this button over here to select a different directory to store your input files and your results files. At the bottom uh, is a window that shows you the console output as DICE is running in the background. We'll update that with information. Any of these windows you can open or close depending on um, what you want for your particular layout. So in the image file selection mode in the 2D example we showed uh, how to do this with selecting files individually. In this case we're going to use a Cine file which comes from a high-speed camera. So we're going to change the file select method to Cine video frames. And then we go to load Cine and there's an example of one in those um, uh, in the folder that you downloaded with um, the DICE examples. So you go into the DICE examples folder. Uh, here's the one we use for the 2D example, one for the stereo, and um, we've got a Cine video of a mechanism for tracking uh, that we'll use in the tracking example. So you go in the images folder select mechanism and open it. This particular video is pretty low resolution so you can see the um, pixels pretty clearly and it's going to uh, make drawing the ROIs uh, seem like they're rather big um, but nonetheless uh, what you see here on the left is you can pick which frame you want to use as your reference frame and you can see it's updating the image from that frame in the file. We're going to use the first image in the sequence. You can also manually change the numbers here and you can set where you want the analysis to start and where you want it to end because sometimes these um, high-speed video uh, files are pretty large and you may only want to track a certain portion uh, of the video. The next thing you need to do is define the ROIs that you want to track. So these buttons here are to add or to remove ROIs. We're going to do one for this object in the lower left hand corner and I'm using the left mouse button to create points and when I'm done creating the shape I use the right mouse button to complete the shape. Um, we'll do another one a little bit more complex on this part at the top. And the first step I'm doing is I'm tracing out the outer boundary of the part but you can see that there's a pin on the inside here that may be moving differently than the actual part itself on the outside so we're going to define an excluded region on the interior so that all we're tracking is the motion of that outside part and not the part on the inside which will probably be stationary. So again left click creates the points in the polygon, right click completes the shape and for the excluded region it takes that out of the ROI. 
So this ROI is only going to track the parks that are in the green here. And depending on the size of your subset, that can impact the time it takes to uh, compute. A small subset is going to be much faster than a large subset. These buttons here for adding uh, an extraction, you may, this part doesn't really come down into this region here, but let's say that there was something that would block the view of that part. You can define a region like this where anytime the subset went behind this area, it would know, DICE would know not to try and track those pixels. But in this example, uh, which is a pretty basic one, we don't, we're not going to deal with obstructions. So we'll just go ahead and take that part out. Um, we'll define one more ROI for this wheel area. And then we've got everything defined that we need for our analysis. Over here on the right, for the optimization method, typically if you have enough contrast, for example, speckles, these speckles are rather large compared to the pixel size, but there's still quite a bit of contrast in the image. If it's a low contrast image, or maybe there's no speckling on the part, then I would select the simplex method, um, which doesn't use the gradients to update the, um, the convergence uh, process. And the gradient-based method uh, is a lot faster than the simplex method, so that's why that one's the default. We're not going to do any filtering, but if you wanted to filter, you could do so here. And then there's some um, thresholding that you can do. This is primarily used for setting up the analysis. It doesn't there's nothing that actually happens in the tracking using this binary threshold, but if you wanted to, say, find um, certain regions where you know the speckles show up or things like that, you can modify these parameters to get a uh, different view of what that um, object is. In our in this particular example, it's pretty clear where the objects of interest are, so we don't need to do any thresholding. And again, this doesn't really enter into the analysis. It's just to to help you um, set up your ROIs. Let's go ahead and reset that. Um, then once we're all set, we just go over here to Run 2D. And we'll automatically get output showing up for the, um, these are the 0, 1, and 2 ROIs. If we looked at the rotation variable, you can see just letting us know the analysis is complete. Um, we were able to successfully track each of those parts and we're looking at the rotation in the z-direction for um, each one of those ROAs that we defined in the, in the input. If you want to look at the output files and the format, you can see in the working directory that in the results folder there's an exodus file that gets created um, with one point for each of the um, ROIs. And then there's also a solution text file, a comma-separated text file that gets created for each of those as well. And if we go into the DICE working directory, there's a results subfolder. And looking in there, we can look at the DICE solution.info file. That tells us about all the different parameters that we had set for the analysis. And then it also tells us if, for example, um, an object couldn't be tracked for a frame and it had to use a backup optimization method, or if it had to use some sort of searching, or if the part moved uh, too far to track, uh, it'll let you know which frames that happened. And this breakdown is given for each of the subsets. And the dice solution underscore zero, this is the um, results for the zero with ROI, and it's got the frame, the coordinate, and X and Y. These are the original coordinates, so they don't change for any of the frames. And that's the, that is the centroid of that ROI that you defined. Then you've got the displacement in X and Y in terms of pixels, the rotation. And then these last three are diagnostic fields that are also put in the file. The first one is the sigma value, and that's a measure of the uncertainty in terms of the um, position the XY position or the UV uh, values for the displacement in X and Y. The second one, this gamma value, is a measure of the matching quality of the reference, uh, uh, the reference subset to what it looks like in the deformed image. So if you see a high value for gamma, that means there's a big disparity between the reference and the deformed. And then the last value is beta, and this is a measure of how 
um, convex your solution is um, in the optimization process. It's actually the, the inverse of the slope at that point. So a bunch of points are taken in the vicinity and the slope is measured and you want to have good slope which defines a clear minimum. So if this value is high it means that there are lots of solutions to the, um, to the optimization problem in that vicinity that would satisfy your objective function. So that's a basic uh, breakdown of how to use uh, DICE in the tracking mode. There's other things that you can do uh, in a more sophisticated uh, fashion, but to do that, you've got to modify the input files direct uh, direct directly. But this pretty much summarizes how you can use the GUI itself to do the tracking. So thanks.